Good morning, so this is not completely ideal having just the, the screen on here, but haven't got screencast for yet, so it's as good as it gets for now. So hopefully you can you can see this. Um, so a bit of guidance on the nutrient cycling bit and why it matters. Um, they have often put this in the exam papers as a two or a three mark question. So you do need to understand why this whole process is quite important. Um, and this is, a, this is a process that happens outside in your gardens, in our forests every day. And it's something that perhaps we take for granted and don't really know an awful lot about. Um, but essentially, it's how nutrients and goodness gets from the soil, then into the crops that are grown, that then are eaten by animals or humans, and then they end up back in the soil. Uh, without this cycling, uh, and you imagine if nutrients only stayed in the soil our food wouldn't be nutritious we wouldn't get anything from it um so it's really important that the nutrients do go around in this cycle otherwise things just wouldn't survive and thrive um so we'll start off with the soil down here so soil has in it lots of nutrients and goodness um so everything from potassium to calcium to minerals and and all sorts of stuff um and the soil gets it normally by some sort of decaying stuff. So if you've got parents who do gardening in your garden, they'll put compost in your soil. They might put something called blood, fish and bone, which has those nutrients into the soil. So they add in some way some sort of nutrients to your soil so that stuff grows. Now, one of the um, arrows coming off of your, off, off of your um, soil thing is nutrients taken up by plants. So most of the time, the reason we put nutrients into the soil is so that the, the plants then take them up and use them to grow fruit and vegetables and that sort of stuff. Uh, notice there is one down here that says some nutrients lost due to leaching. What that is, is when the rain falls onto your soil and the water then goes through your soil, the water will take with it some of those nutrients. Um, and if the water ends up going all the way through the soil and then it flows out to a river, some of those nutrients that you've just put in your soil by putting compost on it might not end up in the plants. It might end up in a river somewhere. So that naturally happens anyway. Um, but most of it will be taken up by plants. Um, those plants will then be eaten by other organisms or people or animals or whatever it may be. Um, and it, those nutrients will all be stored in biomass, which is the name we generically give for plants and living organisms, animals, etc. Uh, but at some point they will die. So either leaves will fall off trees or trees will fall down. Um, I don't know, lightning strike or something. Um, or obviously animals will naturally die. Uh, when those things do die, they go into the litter layer. Again, naturally they would do. Um, so say if um, a frog died in a forest, for example, it would end up on the forest floor. It would then decay and rot and be decomposed and then all those nutrients would end up back in the soil again so all soil really is is kind of decayed dead matter um, and that's what your, your compost is if you have a compost heap at home you put all your vegetable peelings they all sit and rot um, and then eventually they come out as compost and you put it back on your soil again um, so you can see the soil gives nutrients to plants, the plants then die, they end up as a, as a little layer, they're decomposed and they end up back in the soil again. It's just a big cycle, a circle of life if you've watched The Lion King. Um, we get one other addition of nutrients, which goes back to something we did back when we did coasts, uh, which is sometimes we get rock which is weathered, um, which is where it's broken down by rainwater or acid rain or the sunshine sometimes weathers rock as well. Um, and when you break down rock into the tiny, tiny little mineral components, again, that will add minerals and nutrients to the soil too, but in very small supply. Normally it comes from the decaying stuff. Now, this is really important when you're going to start making your ecosystems. So if you've geared up and you've got your bottles ready and you've got your soil ready and your plants and stuff at home, you've got to remember this in, in your cycle too. So whatever plant it is you're going to grow, is going to need some nutrients so it's obviously going to need some soil and of course you're going to plant your plant in some soil um, but then how do you make sure the soil does have continuous amount of nutrients well at some point your plant that grows might have bits that fall off um, and then that will then decay and become a soil again so perhaps that's okay um, but what about your plant that's 
in the aquatic bit in the bottom, for example, how's that going to get nutrients? Um, you can't put soil at the bottom of water. Trust me, don't do it. You'll end up with really muddy water and you won't be able to see anything and everything will die. Um, so you can't put soil in the water. So what could you put there instead that you've learned from this might give you some nutrients? So perhaps giving you some things to think about. So in terms of this, this cycle diagram, uh, that's why it's important. So in terms of your, your question number two, why is it important? Well, without this, if we didn't have this cycle, nothing would grow. If the, if the nutrients didn't end up back in the soil, there'd be nothing for the, the plants to then take up and grow with. So it's really important this whole thing happens or you end up with really poor soil, which is why farming in a way is a bad thing. Because with farming, what we do is we grow loads of stuff in the soil. We then cut it all down and take it somewhere else. So if you grow sweet corn, for example, in a field, none of that's left there to decay and rot. So this cycle doesn't happen, which means a farmer then has to go and put artificial nutrients back into his soil to make it nutritious enough to be able to grow sweet corn again there the next year. So there's definitely things that we do as humans to interrupt this cycle, and it just makes it more hard work for ourselves. Um, so it's really important, especially in nature, this happens. Otherwise, if you imagine if there wasn't the plants, you then wouldn't have the animals eating the plants or the animals would die. Um, if all that biomass wasn't decaying and making this leaf litter layer, there'd be no nutrients in your soil, which means nothing would grow again. So every single part of this is really, really important um otherwise stuff won't grow things won't thrive and survive um yeah if i were you i would do number one and put images in there as well so actually draw some i don't know draw a monkey or, and some plants or something um draw some decaying um leaves and things like that um draw some bacteria and fungus and worms decomposing all your stuff and try and make it a bit more memorable because it's not perhaps the most interesting diagram you've ever seen um, and then again, extension for the, the higher level students. Sorry, I've just moved that and now you can't read it. Um, but have a look at, at, at why there should be a balance between those things. And I've kind of alluded to that with the whole farmers growing things and taking the nutrients away from the system here. Um, but that, that's it for that one.